my mouth. All magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name forever. For this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is our call to worship. Amen. Good morning, church family. I just want to just say this is a great day. I know Veterans Day was a couple of days ago, but however, we chose this day to honor our veterans. Uh, I know we got some freedom that we have that some people cherish and some freedom people have that take for granted. But doing freedom that you have is because of veterans abroad and also stateside. It's not so much the Constitution, but it's the members of the armed forces supported by the Holy Spirit keeping this country safe and secure. So whether you take it for granted, the freedom and liberties you have are holy precious, I ask that you thank a veteran, uh, whether they be at whatever branch may be, just thank them for their sacrifice they did for this great country. Now, we're going to be reciting Article Faith number seven, Regeneration. If you have a previous program, you can follow along with me. If you have a device, you can view it on your device. Uh, we'll recite in unison on the count of three. One, two, three. We believe that the scripture teach that in order to be saved, the sinner must be regenerated or born again. That regeneration consists in giving a holy disposition to the mind that it is in effect and a matter above our comprehension by the power of the Holy Spirit in connection with divine truth so as to secure our voluntary obedience to the gospel and its proper evidence appears in the holy fruits of repentance and faith and newness of life. Amen. Our church covenant. And it reads, having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We do now, in the presence of God, <clears throat> excuse me, we do now, in the presence of God's angels and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully into this covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, disciplines, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We are also engaged to maintain family seeking devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintances, to walk such respect in the world, to be just in our dealing, faithful in our engagement, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all talent, backbiting, and obsessive anger, to abstain from the sale and the use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our effort to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and minds of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We more will be engaged that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. And now to him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, be the power and glory forever. Amen.
is thy name in all the earth. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for the breath of fresh air that we can breathe, our ears that we can hear the songs, our mouths that we can sing, and all of our hands and feet that we can praise you for who you are. But most of all, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who died on the cross that we might have the right to life and eternal life, and who died that we might live. We invoke your presence this morning in this worship. Wherever the worshipers may be this morning, we pray your presence with them. We ask your preaching power, your proclamation power upon our pastor as he breaks unto us the word of life that we may be better people, that we may live, that you would be pleased with us, that you may smile down upon us. We pray for those, God, who are present, the remnant in this house. And we pray forever now that your love will shroud us as we move from this point through the end of this day so that when we get home, we may look over our spiritual shoulders and say it was good that we were here today. In the name of him who died that we might live, let all of God's people say amen, amen, and amen. Please focus your attention upon the screen for this morning's announcements and greetings. Good morning, church family. Here are your church announcements for Sunday, November 15th, 2020. Christmas recitation. Youth ministry is preparing for the Christmas recitation. For your child's Christmas speech, contact Sister Mary Kennebrew at 706-325-5613 or Sister Denise Dolman at 706-536-0984. Causes to celebrate. Deacon and Sister Goldwire celebrates 55 years of marriage and 54 years of membership at 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. Boy Scout Troop 69. Recharter registration now through December 15th. Recharter fees $33 per boy. Contact Deacon G or the church office for more information. Christian Leadership School. Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Association. Every Saturday during November, classes held at 6 o'clock to 8.30 p.m. on November 14th and November 21st. Registration costs $15. Contact Sister Ella Rain Holster at 706-587-9125. Georgia State runoff election. 
Boat registration deadline December 7. Early voting December 14. Election day January 5th, 2021. Where to vote? City Service Center. Job opportunities for parent outreach worker. Contact Teresa L. Amin at 762-821-1107 or contact her at Teresa at projectsarn.org. Sunday Worship Experience, live stream, forestry.org, Facebook, and YouTube at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. Radio 104.9 WFXE FM, Boxy 105 at 8 o'clock a.m. Television WRBL TV 3 at 8.30 a.m. Weekly Bible Study, Deep Sea Fishing, held on Sundays at 5 o'clock p.m. Spiritual Brunch, Mondays at 11 o'clock a.m. Engaging Asking, Wednesdays at 6 o'clock p.m. except Fourth Wednesday. Joined by Zoom video, phone conference, or Facebook Live. Church school classes. Spiritual transformation classes at 9.30 a.m. via Zoom. Christian family class, training for service and discipleship. Intermediate class, men and women's class, women's class, men's class, young adult class, and primary class. Youth Ministry presents virtual children's class at 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. On first and third Mondays, Youth Advisors Bible Stories. And second and fourth Mondays, Physical Fitness with Youth Officers. Contact Sister Shonda Porter for more information. November Upcoming Events Saturday, November 21st, Thanksgiving Food Drive at 2 p.m. Sunday, November 22nd, Life Legacy and Leadership of Pastor Emeritus. Tuesday, November 24th, Deacon's Ministry Teleconference at 6 p.m. Saturday, November 28th, Real Talk with Men at 8 a.m. And Young Adult Ministry Meeting at 6 p.m. Stay connected. Facebook, Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church. YouTube, Fourth Street Baptist. Mobile app, Fourth Street app and website, forestreet.org. Tithing Alternatives, Mail Check to P.O. Box 1591, Columbus, Georgia 31901. Finance Drop Box, located inside the Educational Building. Givelify, access online via Forestreet app or forestreet.org. Prayer List, please keep these members in your thoughts and in your prayers. The Invitation to Discipleship If you are interested in accepting the Invitation to Discipleship, please contact the church office following service today. You may contact the church at 706-324-2055 or email at fsadmin at bellsouth.net. At this time, we would like to acknowledge our guests who are joining us via Facebook Live or on YouTube. We're glad that you have joined us today and hope that you will be led to join us again. Have a great Sunday. As a reminder, church office hours are at 10 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Monday through Friday and on Saturdays at 9 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. If you have information for the weekly announcements via the email address to the church office by 4 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, Thank you for tuning in and have a great week. Ooh, look at everybody giving their tides. Mm. Well, I didn't bring any cash. I didn't bring my checkbook. Girl, I didn't even bring a pen. So, guess they have to catch me next Sunday. No, you can still give. Huh? Yeah. How? Through Givelify. Give a what? Givelify. Give a who? Givelify. How am I gonna do that? Do you have a phone with you? Go to your app store and download Give Giveify. How do you spell that? G I V E uh -huh. L I F Y. Okay. okay. Look at your church, Fourth Street. Find the amount you want to give. Okay. Tap. Give. Done. 
That's it? That's it. Just that easy. Just that easy. Girl, I just gave the five. Okay? <laughs> yeah, you just did that. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am uh, Deacon Anthony Riggins. I'm the chair for the uh, military ministry here at 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. My name is Willie Dickerson. I'm the co-chair here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church of Deacon Ministry. Um, what we provide in the military ministry annually, we have um, a Tri-City Symposium where we, we um, have VA come here with all the VA agents to do claims and um, uh, Fort Benny also and um, the VSOs in this area. What we try to provide for the uh, our church members in the Tri-City area is uh, we try to link them with the right people that do the, the claims, several different things. Um, if a, a person that's looking to, to get an ID card, we can link them link them up with somebody from Fort Benning. Uh, the VA claim agents uh, that we have throughout the city, we try to link a person that's trying to do a claim, we would also uh, link them up with the correct uh, people. Me and the co-chair, uh, we are members of favors, and we also do claims as, um, help assist people with claims ourselves. Also, uh, we provide the support for spouse as well as our church members here at the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church. We also support the military ministry from a, a standpoint of making sure that each and every one has that support from the military ministry. We encourage other people to come and join with us and be a part of this organization here at the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church. You can reach me at 706-289-6857. Uh, My number is 706 315-0597. And you can also uh, call the church office at 706-324-2055. Once again, I want to wish all the uh, members here at 4th Street that served in the military, all branches, a happy Veterans Day. Also, I want to say that freedom is never free, and thank you. Thank you.
This is the day the Lord has made. The Bible tells us to rejoice and be glad in it. We want to again welcome our, ready, our streaming live congregation and our Facebook live congregation. We were thankful to our radio live congregation this morning at 745. And we just continue to thank God for your continuing to connect with us in this worship experience through our streaming live. And uh, no matter where we are, we worship the same God, the same Jesus, and we acknowledge the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit as the third person of the Trinity, God. I want to ask that you will keep the Long family, Carla Long, uh, Deacon Long, uh, Chelsea Long, Kaylin Long, and Josh Long. Uh, Carla's father transitioned uh, this past week. They will be having his graveside uh, on Tuesday at 2 o'clock at Fort Mitchell um, National Cemetery. And so we're asking that you will keep them in prayer. That would be uh, Deacon Long's father-in-law, Chelsea and Caitlin and Josh's grandfather, and to the rest of the family. We extend our condolences to you, and we lift you up in our prayers. And there may be others who have loved ones transition as well. We want to say to you that we are praying also for you and for your family. We want to congratulate uh, all of those who are veterans, uh, retired, active, those who have served um, over the years. Uh, we thank God for the veterans' family, those who have gone the way of the grave, those who are retired, as well as those who are still active. We thank God for the family, as their loved ones have dedicated their lives to the uh, protecting this, the, the, the rights and the privileges of this country, but you also dedicated your life to support them. And so for that, we say thank you for all that you have done, that you are doing, and we pray that those veterans who are still active will continue to do. Uh, let me just also uh, mention uh, that we had a tremendous virtual conference church conference on yesterday we thank god for all of you who connected members who connected during that time to see how god is resetting and god is is refocusing us to move forward into uh 2021 and so we're grateful that you were a part of hearing uh the direction that god under the power of the holy spirit through this under shepherd is leading this church in this pandemic, we pray through this pandemic uh, that, that we will continue to praise and lift his name up uh, and, to, and to glorify him. So thank you so very much for your all support, your leadership, uh, your servant leadership, all the chairs and co-chairs and members of ministries. Uh, we want to say thank you so very much um, for what you have done, are doing, and will do. Uh, let me just also mention that there's a community food giveaway uh, on Saturday from 2 to 4. We want to meet those needs of those persons in our community. Uh, this is a collaborative effort among churches. Um, and so we ask that you would come out and if volunteers, if you would like to come, we ask that you would wear masks, uh, that we will practice um, physical distancing. I know volunteers for 4th Street get in touch with Deacon Moore, Deacon Stancil, Miss Julian, Brother Matthews, that they are coordinating this effort along with other churches, St. Mark AME, um, First African Baptist, Greater Beulah, um, Friendship of Columbus, and the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church, uh, where we are collaborating together to meet the needs of our community. Um, let me just remind you that the teachers retreat uh, will be Saturday from 9 to 12. Those who are teaching, those who desire to teach, uh, they will do a Zoom teacher's retreat on Saturday from 9 to 12. So we ask that all of our teachers uh, here at Fort Missionary Baptist Church, uh, please, please Zoom in. I want to congratulate the Gold Wires for their uh, wedding anniversary. So we want to commend them and congratulate them 
uh, for the number of years that God has kept them together by way of the Holy Spirit. And all of those who may be celebrating, that's right, who may be celebrating uh, their wedding anniversaries, we want to congratulate you as well. God bless you, God keep you, is our prayer. Uh, we, the, and I say we, uh, the General Missionary Baptist Convention, uh, on last week, um, elected a new president and vice president of the General Missionary Baptist Convention. Uh, the new president is uh, Anthony Q. Corbett uh, out of Macon, Georgia, Lundy Chapel Baptist Church, uh, and also our own Corey Neal, the Greater Peace, is the vice president of the General Missionary Baptist Convention uh, at Greater Peace, and we are so thankful that God allowed the election be voted either by phone or by email, uh, or either if there were those uh, who wanted to go on site um, in uh, Macon, they could have gone on site. Uh, but it was um, Pastor Corbett and, and Corey Neal received over 2,000 votes to 500 votes to 28 votes. So it was um, a, a tremendous uh, speaking of the voice of the General Missionary Baptist Convention uh, that we are going forward uh, to support uh, Anthony Q. Corbett and uh, Corey Neal uh, vision for our General Missionary Baptist Convention. So God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. And uh, we are grateful for all that God continues to do to preserve uh, his church here at Fort Missionary Baptist Church. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this time of gathering. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for your peace, your provision. We thank you for your protection from the dangerous seen and unseen. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for the sustaining of your church through this pandemic. We thank you for the faithfulness of your people. Thank you for the generosity and their continued dedication and devotion to your church we thank you for the veterans we thank you for their sacrifices and their family sacrifices to ensure that we have the privileges of freedom as many will say is really isn't free but lives was given blood was shed to ensure that we enjoy the rights and the privileges in these great United States of America. Now, Lord, we just thank you for Son Jesus, who also gave up his life, shed in innocent blood, that we may become soldiers in the army of the Lord. And that we say thank you. Thank you for our children. Thank you for parents and grandparents and guardians and foster parents and godparents we we just thank you for those that you have set aside to entrust children into their hands to mold and to shape in the nurturing and admonition of the Lord now Lord we ask that you would just bless now bless this world bless this country bless this state and city neighborhoods and bless your churches and as we travel through this pandemic that we will continue to look up to you, continue to look for your guidance, continue to look for your direction. We pray, oh Heavenly Father, that you will bless sick and shut in everywhere. We pray that you will bless those who are bereaving and grieving the going home of loved ones, the transitioning of loved ones. Bless them with your comfort, your consolation. And Lord, we pray that you will bless parents, grandparents, children, young adults, middle ages, golden ages. They will come to truly know the joy of your salvation to them. Now, Lord, we ask that you will continue to send us who you want us to have and what we need. It's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus. We lift this prayer to you. It's in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. This is your servant's prayer. Amen. We're going to ask at this time that just attend your holy field and Brother Antoine Johnson and Brother Chris Coleman, however the Holy Spirit leads, that they will share with us through song, through the musical instruments, what thus 
the Lord gives to them as we prepare our hearts for the word of God. God bless you. Silver and gold, silver and gold, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. No fame or fortune, no riches untold, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold silver and gold silver and gold I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold no fame or fortune is untold. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Don't give me a mansion on top of the be the glory how many rather have Jesus than silver I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold can I just go ahead and tell I'd rather have Jesus than the big houses on the hill I, I, I'd rather have Jesus than, 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 than the, the most expensive automobile. I, I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus walking with me through a storm than not walking with me through the storm. I, I'd rather have Jesus in, in the midnight hour than not have him at all. I, I'd rather have Jesus than 
have a hundred thousand friends and and he's my only friend I, I'd rather have Jesus <laughs> more than rubies diamonds I, I'd rather have Jesus is there anybody in the streaming congregation rather have Jesus than silver and gold because silver and gold will soon pass away houses will pass away cars will break down I'd rather have Jesus than have all the money in the world I, I'd rather have Jesus than silver yeah 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 come on come on Craig. come on streaming congregation come on it's time to give him worship I'd rather have Jesus <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd rather have Jesus. And silver and gold. Thank you, Sister Holyfield. Thank you so very much for reminding us in this materialistic society in which we live. In this the society where we believe that materials, houses, cars, money gives us our security and our identity. But somebody told me once, I think it was my daddy, I've heard him preach it, uh, uh, Reverend Dickinson, you can't attach a blink truck, a U-Haul, to the back of a hearse. You can't translocate a house to heavenly home. Because if you have Jesus, you have a mansion not made with hands. Eternal into heaven. I'd rather have Jesus <laughs> than silver and go god bless you god keep you is our prayer thank you so very much brother antoine and brother christopher for accompanying this sister holyfield and we are grateful that the holy spirit used in such a mighty way to remind us what we rather have in this pandemic <laughs> God be the glory. Let me just ask if we can go to Galatians chapter number 6 and I want to focus our attention on verses 7 through 9. Galatians chapter number 6 verses 7 through 9. Through nine. I'm going to ask that the media ministry be prepared to bring up the model. We will use the model this morning. Amen. Thank you so very much. We have brother Cameron G up in the media ministry uh, managing everything thank you brother g thank you deacon g god bless you all we want to go galatians galatians 6 chapter 6 verse 7 through 9 and i want to commence reading at verse number 7 as paul is writing to the church of galatia in that region in that area and listen to what paul writes under the guidance guidance of the holy spirit he says starting with verse number 7 I'll be reading from the english standard version he says do not be deceived God is not mocked for whatever one sows that will he also reap for the one who sows to the to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption but the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life and let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. I want to use as a sermon title, based on those scriptures as the scripture text or the sermon text, do not give up. 
do not give up. Paul urges the Galatians, those believers in God through Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and dwelt by the Holy Spirit, not to grow tired of doing good. Doing good is hard work, Paul was saying to them then. Especially if someone begins to doubt whether it even matters. Paul is urging the Galatians uh, to keep living in a way that is consistent with what they believe. Because they were free. They were liberated in Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit was in them. And Paul was warning them, Reverend Dickerson, that those who would plant, those who would sow to the flesh, those who would sow to their own desires, those who would sow to their own will, those who would sow to their carnality would reap. And in that context, he was talking about destruction. And those who would sow to the spirit, they would reap eternal life. If they did not give up. Today in 2020, my brothers and sisters, if I can fast forward to 2020, 21st century, in this pandemic, in this humanistic, this secularistic, this self-centered, systemic, racist, individualistic, relativistic, pluralistic, materialistic, religionistic, and amoralistic, or some may say amoralistic, culture society in which we live. Let us listen again to the words of God Paul, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, instructed them then, and let me just say, in this context today, in our present context today, it still is relevant. What Paul instructed them then is still relevant and applicable to believers in Jesus Christ right here and now. Come close. Let us hear in the various versions of the Bible, again, what Paul instructs them then and has application to us today. Galatians chapter number six, verse nine, in the NIV, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians chapter number 6 verse 9 in the ESV. And let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Galatians chapter number 6 verse 9 in the KJV. And let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In Galatians chapter number 6 verse 9 in the NAS. B, let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. In Galatians chapter number 6 verse 9 in the NLT, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Galatians chapter number 6 verse 9 in the CSB let us not get tired of doing good for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. 
So all my brothers and sisters in the streaming live congregation, in the Facebook live congregation, the remnant that sits here, uh, let's look at how various persons respond to God's word. And we're going to call the model up. We're going to ask that the model be placed on the screen. We're going to introduce this to some and reintroduce it to others. This is a point of reference that we want to use. This is a frame of thinking. We're asking that you who declare that you're believers in Jesus Christ to really examine, evaluate, audit where you are in your spiritual maturity, your spiritual maturing in God through Jesus Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit and those who may be listening who may not have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ you also can use this as a point of reference to see where you are as relates to your relationship with God through Jesus Christ and those who find themselves as being in the church believe that you are believing in Jesus Christ it's a time for you to reevaluate where you are examine discern where you are in terms of your Christian maturing as it relates to God through Jesus Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit so how 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 does persons respond to God's word in these times so here's person number one you have it on the screen person number one this is the natural person and this model comes out of first corinthians chapter number two chapter number three it's there the context of that that paul is writing to the church of corinth he's basically dealing with worldly wisdom versus godly wisdom and so paul reference in chapter 1, chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians, he says this natural person. And so the natural person self sits on the throne. That little chair in the middle of the, of the, of the model represents throne. Self sits on the throne, the S. If you notice where the cross is, the plus sign represents the cross, represents Christ, it's outside of the circle. And those circles that's around, those small circles around the, the larger circle represents attractions of the world. Attractions of the world. And so attractions of the world is money, cars, houses, status, Seeking to lift self up in pride because of accumulating all these attractions of the world. And, and a natural person, the Bible says, the natural person has no awareness of God in his or her life. The cross of Jesus is foolishness to him or her. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 verse 18 says. He or she places him or herself on the throne and is spiritually disconnected. The cross, Christ, is outside of the circle which indicate that this natural person is disconnected. This person does not have a relationship with with God through Jesus Christ. Do not believe in Jesus the Christ as my Savior, my Savior and Lord. Do not believe the Word of God is the inerrant, inspired, infallible Word, absolute truth of God. What they believe that what is preached, what is taught, what the Bible represents is absolutely foolishness because they're spiritually dead, they're disconnected. Self sits on the throne. This person, worldviews, influence, worldviews, cultivate, nurtures what they believe. Their belief system is encouched, rooted in individualism, 
materialism, relativism, uh, pluralism, uh, it's encouched, it's influenced by philosophers, philosophy does not believe the Bible is the absolute truth. And so this person is unsaved. This person is disconnected, disconnected spiritually. So when this person hears Galatians 6, 9, or when this person hears verse 7, when it talks about you, God is not to be mocked, another translation say, you can't fool God. When you sow to the flesh, you shall harvest, you shall reap, and in that context, destruction, which means eternal damnation. This person sows to the flesh, so that person will reap what they sow, and what they will sow is self. They, they worship the Antichrist. The Antichrist for this person is me, myself, and I. It's all about me, it's all about myself, and it's all about I. And just those in my circle of influence, that, that's, that's, that's who I'm pleasing, I'm pleasing me. So when they hear, don't give up. When things get tough, when things get rough, because they are rooted in things, their attractions. So when the car goes away, when the money gets funny, but bills keep on running, when, when, when their, 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 their value of themselves begins to get challenged because things are not going the way that they want them to go, and so now they feel is that they're not worth anything when their marriage it gets on the rocks because they are steeped in this belief that, that, that life is to be happy. Life is to be pleasant. And anything goes contrary to that, then it makes them believe that life is not worth going on or either marriage is not worth going on or or either relationship or staying on a job is not worth sticking it out perseverance and 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 and, and, and persistence become challenged because everything that they have basically pursued is now fading away their happiness is based upon self, things, external things. And so when they hear, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. It becomes foolishness. You mean to tell me, do good for somebody that don't do good back to me? Uh-uh, that don't make sense. Love somebody who don't deserve to be loved? That don't make sense. Forgive somebody who just hurt me to the core of my heart? That makes no sense. You mean I have to give to the poor? You know, that, I, I choose what I do with my money. That makes no sense. Hanging there, sticking there in a relationship that, 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 that's sour, that, 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 that is not making me happy, that makes absolutely no sense. So when they hear, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest, a blessing, if you don't give up. Paul is saying that to those who believe in Jesus Christ. They will reap a harvest in due time, if they don't give up. But that's the natural person. They are spiritually dead. So here's number two. How does... A carnal religious person respond to let us not get tired of doing good for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up notice with the carnal person notice what Romans chapter 8 verse 6 through 8 says about the carnal person it says for to be carnally minded is death 
to plant and to sow to the flesh, to sow to my evil desires, my affections, the carnally minded, the worldly minded is death, eternal death. Spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Enmity means hatred, hostile, rebellious against God. So when a carnally minded religious person hears the word, they may hear it, but they won't trust it. Particularly if it convicts and it's something that they really desire, it's their affection, it pleases them. Again, look at where the S is for the carnal person, the religious person. Self is still on the throne. They may say they believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. That comes where the cross comes inside of the circle. It appears that they are saved. It appears that they are religious. It appears that they know Christ until you begin looking at their lifestyle. Many times these are the persons that tells you that you can't judge them because they've taken out of context what Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 says. When Jesus says thou shalt not judge, that if you judge you will be actually, it will be meted out, it will be measured the same way in which you judge. Jesus was not saying you never judge. Jesus was saying, hey, this is the way you don't want to judge. He was really saying correct in the right way. Judge in the right way. What's the right way? With kindness, with gentleness, with love. But the carnal religious person take the attitude, you can't judge me. Well, that's not what the text says. Also, they don't understand what 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 2 verse 14 says. This says spiritual persons judges everything. A spiritual person examines, discern, evaluate everything. Why? Because a spiritual person has the mind of Christ. Why? Because that person has been born again. That person has been indwelt with the Holy Spirit. But a carnal religious person, they keep on kicking against the word. I hear it, but I just don't accept it. I will not surrender. I will not yield to the word of God. But I'll hear it. I'll come and listen to the preacher preach all day long. I'll come and come to Bible study. I'll come and come to Sunday school. I'll go to every Bible conference they offer, pay money right in the, in the, in the, in the side of the, of the Bible. I'll make notes, but I will not trust it. I will not live it out. Why? Because this person also is spiritually dead. They just say they believe. They say but they, 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 they sow to the flesh because self is still on the throne. It has not been dethroned. And so the Bible says, neither indeed can this person please God. Why? Because they sow to the flesh. So what the reaping will have, what they will receive in terms of the harvest is destruction. That's why he says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. You cannot fool him. And so this is a carnal person. They will get tired in well-doing. Their response would be, well, if a person hurts me to the core of my heart, you know, God knows my heart. Let me just go ahead and say, yeah, God sure knows your heart. He knows it's evil. He knows it's manipulative. He knows it's deceitful. He knows it's mean. He knows it's rebellious. He knows it does no good unless it is changed. So when a person says, well, I know what the Bible says, but I ain't Jesus. That's what carnal religious people say, Reverend Dixon. I know the Bible says I should forgive them, but I ain't going to forgive them because, you know, they hurt me. It's all personal. It's based on emotions. It's based upon feelings with a carnal religious person. This person is very much spiritually dead because they do not yield to 
the word of God, they cannot because they have not been born again. And we have so many churches across the world who are filled with carnal religious people. They sing in choirs. They sit in pews. They sit in pulpits. They do all kind of ministries. Look at the evidence. Look at what they're sowing to. They're sowing to their flesh. I'm going to do everything that pleases me. Doesn't matter about what the Bible says. I'm going to do everything that pleases me. As long as it pleases me, then I'm good. But I can come to church and I can sing, order my steps in his word. I can raise up holy hands. But that's just for that moment. After they leave, you know, it's back to sowing to self. It's back pleasing self. When it says, do not give up. A carnal religious person like a fragile egg. They cannot withstand pressure. Whenever pressure comes, whether it's on their job, they won't jump ship. Whether it's pressure in the church, they want to jump ship. Pressure in marriage, jump ship. So now we have a generation of young people, the only thing they've learned is how to quit. They can't withstand pressure. They don't have attention spans more than 15 seconds. But yet they can stay on the Xbox, PlayStation for two hours. Then when you have virtual, then, you know, they, they don't know how to get on. And if they know how to get on, they sleep. You know. You know. But, 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 but we have a lot of carnal religious people who just want to please themselves. Carnal religious persons, one of the evidence of, of sowing to the the flesh is that everything has to be convenient for them. Everything has to be convenient for them. If it's not convenient for me, then, then, then I don't have nothing to do with it. They are steeped in, again, everything pleasing. Everything has to be happy. They get into this, particularly those who are married, they get into this Cinderella syndrome. Especially if you see the Cinderella ending. Got a prince carried on a carriage and you live happily ever after. That's the mentality that many carnal religious couples get into and you hear things like, well, he don't make me happy. She don't make me happy. Well, if you really look at holy matrimony, it's not designed for you to be happy. It's designed for you to have joy. <laughs> Don't miss that. So many couples looking at he's both. No, what the couples are there, two imperfect people are there to please God first and foremost. And when you have a desire to please God, guess what? You, ex you, you experience the joy of the holy matrimony. Is that right? Because you're pleasing God. He said, I've given you joy and I've given it completely. So when you take your focus off of someone making you happy as opposed to I'm going to please God. And when that person don't make me happy, then the joy is that I'll still love them in spite of. So my joy don't come from him or her making me happy. My joy comes from being pleasing to God. And if they both understand that and have that perspective of pleasing God, then guess what? They reap the harvest of joy. But you have to have two equally yoked. <laughs> and their focus is pleasing God. So, so religious carnal people, when you talk that to them, it's like that's foolishness. I'm tired. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm out. Let us not get tired of doing good. Let us not get tired of being patient with one another. Let us not get tired with being a, 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 a loving to one another. Let us not get tired of, of, of long suffering. 
Let us not get tired of, of, of having control of self that we don't lose our temper. We, we have a temperament that, that, that does not displease God. Let us not get tired, but those who are carnal and religious, when they hear this, it's like that makes no sense to me. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what they're putting me through. Well, I just come by to tell you, I may not know, but God knows. <laughs> God knows. And so the carnal and the natural person, this sounds foolish to them. It makes no sense. They've gotten to the end of their rope. Whenever a natural and a carnal person, religious person get to the end of their rope, they will not listen to Jesus. They will not discern the voice of Jesus. Through his word. No matter how many times you make an appeal. It's about hey. It's all about me. What about me? What about me? What about me? And they, do, they throw in the towel. They give up. Here's what the third person. The, the spiritually immature person. The spiritually immature person. This is a person, you can find this person in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verses 1 through 3. It says, and brethren could not speak unto you as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. This is the baby spiritually born again believer they still have that carnality in them but look at how their focus has changed the natural person focus or the attractions that they were pursuing was the houses the cars the money exalting self pride the carnal religion, religious person, even though they say they believed in God through Jesus Christ, they were pursuing the same thing in order to secure their identity, to give them worth. But look at where the spiritually immature person, look at where the cross is now. The cross has taken the throne. Christ has taken the throne of their life. The S has been dethroned, self. And as they are maturing, their priorities and their focus have changed because of their relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Their prayer life has become their priority. Talking with God day in and day out. Not just for themselves, but also for their family. Having a little talk with Jesus because they're beginning to understand he will make everything all right. And look at what also happened. They began to have an appreciation for the word of God. They take seriously now. Study to show thyself approved and work when need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. When they began to hear Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 5, where Paul lifts up and he says, Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How is a mind going to be renewed that has been etched in carnality? It has to be changed spiritually. I have to read his word. I have to study his word. I have to, to believe his word. And I must obey his word. Worship becomes so vitally important. Corporate worship. Individual worship. Becomes so vitally important. Because now the spiritually immature person. Is beginning to understand by way of the Holy Spirit. Is that this life is not about you. This journey is not about you. It's all about pleasing Christ. Glorifying, that's what worship is about, is to glorify, to magnify, to praise him because you have come to believe that he is worthy of your praise. You're not no longer planting, you're not longer, no longer sowing to the flesh, but now you're sowing to the spirit. You shall 
reap the harvest of eternal life at the proper time. The spiritually immature person, the baby, continues to feed on the milk. There is struggle. They struggle with their flesh. As Paul says, when I do good, want to do good, evil is always pulling at me. <laughs> when I want to cuss somebody out, Holy Spirit said, no, that's not right. Who do I yield to? Do I yield to my flesh, my emotion, my hurt, or do I yield to the word of God? As an act of the Holy Spirit empowers me to hold my tongue. Do I allow my emotions to run so wild that it will cause me when somebody hurts me that I want to hurt them back? When the Bible says, God says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, and I will repay as an immature Christian. As they're studying the word, as they're studying corporately and collectively with other seasoned Christians, they began to learn that they have to make sure that they are yielding to the Holy Spirit and the word of God as an act of obedience. That if someone hurts me, then I know that I place them in the hands of God. And God will repay when he says, love your neighbor as yourself, it's not a question of negotiation. But I do what he instructs me to do. The Holy Spirit helps me. He is a helper to do and live the life that is pleasing to God. The Bible says, deny yourself daily. Kill these mortal members that you may walk in. In the victory of Jesus Christ. That's a spiritual immature person. But when this person hears, let's not, let's not get tired of doing what is good at just the right time. We will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. It is not the reaping the harvest of blessings that will basically validate and justify your salvation. Will save you. It is because the person is saved. They are willing and desiring to do the will, the way, and the word of God. And the harvest will be eternal life. Which is the evidence that they're saved. And as the immature Christians continue to be guided and illumined by the Holy Spirit, that this is an evidence of your salvation, your love of others is an evidence of your salvation. Your forgiveness of others is an evidence of your salvation. Your enduring, your persist, persistence is an evidence of your salvation. Not giving up is an evidence of your salvation. Not giving up on Christ, not giving up on your Christian walk is an evidence of your salvation. Amen. So this immature Christian, this immature spiritual person, continue to strive, continue to desire, to grow in the will, the way, and the word of God. And this is the last one. They ex that this immature Christian learned to have faith in God, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit, and his word. Then the number four, the spiritually maturing person. When this person hears, let us not get tired of doing good, for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. This is the person who have come to mature, not obtaining maturity, but they're striving to continue to mature in the will, the way, and the word of God. That they now embrace what the word of God says. They have an active, consistent prayer life. They talk to Jesus. They talk and they tell him all about their problems. When the Bible says, thou shalt not be anxious about nothing as you mature and you mature and you mature spiritually then you don't find yourself losing sleep at night when the bible says he neither slumbers nor sleep so why do you lose sleep when he slumbers he neither slumbers nor sleep go on to bed cast all of your anxieties cast all of your worries upon him because he cares for you the spiritually Maturing Christian, embrace and trust what he says. When he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. 
acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path the spiritual maturing person embrace the truth they began to walk by faith and not by their feelings. They began to walk by faith and not by their emotions. They began to continue to grow in the will, the way, and the word of God. When the, when the Bible says, you know, it, it, it says, uh, the word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. Hide his word in, it, in your heart, in your mind, that you may not sin against God. They embrace, they have a thirst to study the word. They have a thirst to read his word. They have a thirst to be a part of the collective Bible study. Have a thirst to be a part of the collective uh, 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 church school that they may grow. They will be surrounded by other believers in Jesus the Christ that they can be seasoned. They can see how other seasoned Christians handle situations under the power of the Holy Spirit. They let their lives become a witness to others. Let your light so shine. Don't hide your light on the bushel. It gets to me when there are those who say that they are maturing in Jesus the Christ. They want to hide their testimony. They're ashamed to tell people about what God has done for them. They're ashamed to talk about where God has brought them from. They're ashamed to tell them that they were pregnant at 16 and God has allowed them to get through that and they still love God and they, he never left them. They're ashamed to talk about the ugliness of their, their, their depravity. They want to talk about all the, 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 where they are now. I wear the white dress, wear the white hats and the coverings. I look as though that I've always been where I am, but I never want to tell anybody about where he's brought me from. That, that's the carnal religious person. He said, let your light so shine. So see his good works in you. And it may glorify, show the power of God in your life. Show the presence of God in your life. Not ashamed to tell somebody how good God has been. And it's not talking about you. It's talking about him and what he's done in your life. Spiritually maturing person. Continue to walk by faith. Not by sight. This person has a Christ-centered life who has the mind of Christ. Christ sits on the throne of his or her life now. His or her affections are set on things above. This person is very conscious about what they put in their minds and what they put in their hearts, how they live among others before others. I just say to those who declare, as I get ready to go to my seat, I just ask that you be careful what you put on Facebook. Be careful how you talk in the social mediums because it's not just a small audience that you are actually projecting to you're projecting to a worldwide audience and the Bible says make sure you don't become a stumbling block to others who will come to believe in Jesus Christ we have to be aware of how we live before the public and I know people have this attitude sometimes about I don't care what people think of me well that's from a position of security in Christ but you have to have a concern of how they see you as a Christian because your lifestyle becomes the testimony of what God has truly done in your life. And if a person is still living the way they were when they were unsaved and nothing has changed, God says, God will not, cannot be mocked. You can't fool him. That's why I don't buy into this popular saying, fake it until you make it. God is not into pretense. He's into authenticity. He's into realness. You know, my brothers and sisters, as I look at and as you look at this point of reference in terms of the persons and how 
persons respond to God's word, here's my question to you. Which one are you? You evaluate. You examine. You discern how you respond to the word of God. How you react to the word of God. Is the word of God an anathema? Is enmity? You will never yield. Whatever you sow to the flesh, you shall reap. Whatever you sow to the spirit, you shall, shall reap. You know, my brothers and sisters, the only way that one can sow to the spirit, one must be, one's got to be born again. And all oh, my brothers and sisters, I just come by and just continue to lift up to you. Don't you give up. If you truly have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, no matter how tough, no matter how rough, no matter how difficult times may get, you keep on keeping on. You keep on trusting in the Lord. You can keep on singing, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, whether shall I go? You can keep on in the difficult times. You can keep on saying, I had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some difficult times. But when I look around and search things over, I've had more good days than I've had bad days. So I won't, I won't complain. I won't quit. I won't throw in the towel. No matter how despairing, no matter how discouraging things might look, I know there is is a brighter day ahead and I just come by to encourage you no matter what the valleys are no matter what the difficulties are no matter what the despairing moments are I just come by to tell you never quit if you truly have a love trust obedient relationship with God through Jesus the Christ the Holy Spirit is there to help you in times of difficulty to help you in times of temptation to help you in times of despair he can rock you at night he can rock you and make you not yield to a temptation it will rock you at night and he will ease your troubling mind he will rock you at night and night don't always have to be night time night time can be a rocky relationship Nighttime could be huh, a sour marriage. Huh, nighttime can be huh, difficulty on your job. Huh, nighttime can be huh, financial stress. Huh, nighttime can be huh, all kinds of crises. Huh, nighttimes can be huh, all types of situation. But I just come by to tell you, huh, you can be reminded huh, when the songwriter wrote, huh, I've seen the lightning flashing. Huh, I've heard the thunder roar. Huh, I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard, I heard a still small voice telling me to still to fight on, to still to press on, to still have perseverance, still don't quit. Why is that, Reverend Flace? Because he's promised, he's promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Oh, oh. Never alone. I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He's promised he'll be with me as I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I just come by to tell you if you truly are maturing in God through Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. I never said you won't feel like quitting. I never said you won't have an attitude that you want to throw in the towel. But I 
I do remind you that when the Bible says let us not get tired of doing good for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up don't give up now you in the streaming congregation you may feel like giving up but don't give up but if you do not have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ life will bury you life will throw dirt on top of you life will stump all over you and make you believe that is not worthy persisting is not worth persevering is not worth continuing on and you will soon throw in the towel you are throwing the towel on your marriage you are throwing the towel on your children you are throwing the towel on your job you are throwing the towel in the church you are throwing your towel every chance that things are not going the way that you intended it to go but let me just show you somebody who had every reason to throw in the towel come here now come right here what's his name his name is Jesus the Christ the son of the living God Emmanuel God with us who came down through 40 and two generations conceived in the womb of a virgin called Mary by the Holy Spirit he had every reason to give up he had every reason to throw in the towel he had every reason to quit they talked about him slandered his name wanted to set him up called him everything but a child of God he walked the dusty streets of Palestine making lame men and women walk giving a man who was blind in his sight and then he went to a hill called Calvary laid down his hands on an old rugged cross had done nothing to deserve being crucified he was an innocent lamb but he was sent on a mission to take yours and my place he did no sin he was without sin but he took on your sin he took on the wrath of God took on the judgment of God took on the condemnation of God and then told them if I be lifted up I'll draw my death will draw all men boys and girls unto me he had every reason to cool it he had every reason to throw in the towel but he stayed on that cross between the sixth to the ninth hour dying for your sin dying for my sin the Bible says he says it's a finish I've completed the mission that my father sent me on I did not give up I did not throw in the towel it's finished I paid the penalty for sin I've broken the power of sin it's a finish father into thy hands I commend my spirit he had every reason to throw in the towel. He had every reason to quit. But I'm so glad that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus went to Pilate, requested his dead body, put it in a borrowed tomb. Reverend Dickinson, it looked like that he was defeated. It looked like it was all over for him. Looked like he had quit. Looked like Satan had the victory. But he he stayed there all oh, Friday night stay there all oh, day Saturday stay there all oh, Saturday night but I thank God that the story didn't stop there but I thank God for early is there anybody who thank God for early early Sunday morning he pulled the sting from death pulled the victory from the grave rolled it up in his divine hand Placed it in the vault of eternity in early resurrection morning. He stepped out on resurrection ground and declared, All power is in his hands in heaven and in earth. 
I'm so glad that God's promise was proven on that resurrection morning. His promise is absolutely true. He promised he'll raise him in three days. I'm so glad that his power is absolutely real. Jesus walked around for 40 days showing them he never quit. Is there anybody in the house? He's conquered death, hell, and the grave. The Bible says he ascended to sit on the right hand throne of the Father where he's interceding right now for every believer who believes in him. And one of these old days, is there anybody in the streaming audience? One of these old days, anybody in the remnant here? One of these old days, he's coming back again. But until then, he's told us not to give up, not to quit. He's left his, his, his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to indwell every believer, to comfort you in the midst of difficult situations, to help you not to quit. Is there anybody in the house? Why won't you give up? Why won't you quit? Because a spiritually maturing believer, an immature Christian, will come to understand that it's not about you, but it's to glorify, it's to magnify, it's to lift up his holy name, that one of these old days, you want to hear him say, well done, well done my good and faithful servant you've been faithful in dark times you've been faithful in difficult times you've been faithful until the end come on in enter into your master's joy hallelujah praise his holy name is there anybody out there who knows what I'm talking about if you know what I'm talking about you ought to say amen amen Amen. Hey, hey, amen. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He's worthy. He's so worthy to be praised do not give up do not quit let us not become weary in doing good for the at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up i don't know where you are today i don't know if you're at the end of your rope with whatever you may be going through i don't know if you become so tired of being tired. But if you do not have a love, trust, obedient relationship with God through Jesus Christ, this makes no sense. But it's only by the guidance, the illumining of the Holy Spirit, the giving of faith, that you will trust that he can change your heart, change your mind in the midst of your circumstances. Let him become your savior and your Lord. Let him give you the gift of the Holy Spirit who will help you to endure, to persevere, and to persist that he may get the glory. I know, I know in feelings it makes no sense. But I pray that you will trust and you will have faith and who he is and what he has done. He can change your life, he can change your heart. A lot of times being in situation, it's not about changing the situation all the time, it's about changing us, that we can deal with the situation, that we can show his power in us. We can show his peace, the good work in us. We can show his perseverance in us. We can show his unconditional love in us. We offer you Christ right now. And if you believe that Jesus the Christ is Lord and God is raised him from the dead, the Bible says you will be saved. You will be rescued from the penalty of sin, from the power of sin. And one day you will be rescued from the presence of sin. We invite you to come right now through the streaming congregation, through the streaming audience, guests. We invite you. 
to believe in Jesus the Christ, his crucifixion, his shedding of blood, the taking your place, the resurrection, the ascension, and he will come back again. If you truly believe that, you believe you're a sinner, and you repent of your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you. So we ask that you will call this number, 706-324-2055, 706-324-2055, and just call them and say, I've been saved. I, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. I, I was a sinner, and I believe he saved my soul. He's made me whole. And I want to come as a candidate for baptism to the Four Street Missionary Baptist Church. I want to unite with the Four Street Missionary Baptist Church where I can grow in the will, the way, and the word of God. I can learn how to live this Christian life. If you're relocating to the area, to the region, and you're looking to unite with a church where it's Bible-based, Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led, and mission-bound, we invite you to come and unite here at the Fourth Missionary Baptist Church. Whether it's a military reassignment, job relocation, whether you're matriculating through one of the colleges, the community colleges, the technical schools in the area, whether it's in Muskogee County, Russell County, Phoenix City, Columbus, Georgia, Midland, Harris County, Casita, wherever it may be, we invite you to come to unite here at the Fortune Missionary Baptist Church where we can grow together, can strive together for the advancement of his kingdom. Call this number, 706-324-2055, 706-324-2055. Give them your name, your number, that we can follow up with you. If you strayed away for any other reason and you find yourself that you're out of fellowship with God through Jesus Christ and you need to be restored, we invite you to come and call that number again, 706-324-2055. Let them know you're seeking restoration. You want to be restored back into fellowship and you want to become united with the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church. God loves you. May God bless you. May God keep you as I pray. We want to ask now, this is our worship through giving, our offering, our tithe and our offering. We want to ask at this time that you will prepare your minds and your hearts. Those who want to give through GiveLify, we ask that you would go ahead and take time and go to GiveLify. Go to the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church. Look for the emblem, the brand, the logo, the crib, the cross, and the empty tomb. And go ahead and make your offering now your tithe your mission bound your love offering your benevolence offering we ask that you would make that now if you choose to drop it off during the week we ask that you would go ahead and fill out the envelope that the church has provided go ahead and make that pre 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 preparation so when that time come you can bring it through the week whether it's monday through friday from 10 to 4 on saturday from 9 to 1 go ahead and make that out now if you choose to mail it in, go ahead and make out the envelope that's provided by the church and put it into a self, uh, an addressed envelope. Address it to the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church, P.O. Box 1591. P.O. Box 1591. Columbus, Georgia, 31901. And mail it in. And we thank all of you for your devotion, your, de your dedication, your stewardship your generosity to continue to give generously to the church of God God bless you God keep you as our prayer dear gracious father we thank you for the offering pray thank you for the tithe we pray that you will bless it and use it to continue to advance your kingdom we pray for the givers we thank you for their gift generosity. Bless them as our prayer. Now, Lord, we pray that you will dismiss us from this place, but never, never from your grace, never from your presence, your power, your provision, nor your protection. It's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus, from whom all blessings flow. Let us all sing. Praise, 
praise, praise, praise. God bless you. God keep you. Congratulations to all of those high school footballers, student athletes who won this past weekend. Congratulations to those who are college. Congratulations to you if your team won. And congratulations to those who team will win. And those who lost, God bless you. God keep you. And I'll just continue to say to you, never give up. To God be the glory. Walk in his power. You are dismissed. Have a wonderful evening. And we pray that you will join with us this evening at 5 o'clock in the deep sea fishing. Thank you all so very much. You may be dismissed. Thank you all. God bless you. God keep you as I pray. Thank you so very much for tuning in with us and listening to the message. We pray that it was a message to inspire. We pray that it's a message to encourage. We also pray that it was a message to convict. If you do not have a church home, we pray that you will come and join us here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church where we're located at the corner of 3rd Avenue and 5th Street in the historic district. And if you do not have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we want you to know that he desires that you be saved right now. Again, thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you on next week.